Well, just as you think things couldn't get bigger, they do. Morgan Stanley has just put in a $400 price target increase for Tesla, and it turns out that sent the stock absolutely haywire, breaking through some key levels. But at the same time, we've got things such as the Dow transportation average, which often predicts what the market's going to do next, going down and making a new low. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Daily Show. We discuss stocks, commodities, and cryptos together. Today, we talk about dark pool liquidity, some of the big trades we've seen over the last 24 hours, and of course, central banks and what they're doing right now to support the markets. But more importantly, we need to focus on the gap fills that could be just around the corner. Are there bears sitting at 4,500? Well, we'll talk about that and more in today's show as we explore this massive breakout in Tesla and the 50 DMA getting taken out. Well, welcome back, everybody, to The Daily Show, where we discuss markets around the world, including macro lead indicators and, of course, the hottest charts. If you like anything to do with markets, make sure to subscribe and, of course, follow the content because we're covering so much this week. So inflation's just around the corner, but one of the hottest inflation sectors, which is energy, everyone's been looking at, seems to be selling. Why? Well, I think it's dark pool trades. We did report on this late last week, and we're starting to see some profit targeting in that area. And while all eyes are on Tesla, we also should be looking at semiconductors. They're not coming along for the ride in the last couple of sessions. Let's talk about global liquidity. What's going on in the liquidity world? Well, the short answer is it's declining still, but it seems to be having very little effects on the market. And we've been looking at this for quite some time here in 2023, and it doesn't seem to be the indicator because of some of the backdoor things that are going on. Long term, it may have an effect, but at this stage, it doesn't seem like the taperings continue on uh, to bearish action. What could be telling us that this is a false rally, though, is the bullish percent index, which obviously did not increase over the last 24 hours of trade. And I think that's very important. Usually, when we have a good recovery, we're seeing the bullish percent index actually increase. That just didn't happen, even though the market opened up with a nice gap up, but not quite a gap fill. And we've got some great pinpoint accuracy levels that we could be looking at later on from a technical perspective. Ford PE for all investors now, still not good on this market. Just a quick update here. This particular one for the world or the US versus all of the world, you can see the big difference. And when you think about everything in terms of all the countries excluding the US, that is excluding basically AI at this point then look at it. It's totally different. It's actually quite a lot cheaper on the market to buy outside of the US, but it's not been the best performer. Now, we mentioned that we had some interesting stats coming up, and here's a great one from Almanac Trader, and I want to read you some interesting points here. First up, we know that the Friday, that is the options expiration, the maximum pain quadruple witching event, which happens this week, it's a big deal, is going to generally be negative. In fact, of the last 10 which you can see here of the last 11, I mean, 10 of them have been negative. Now, not all have been massively negative, but how about that? Of the last 11 Fridays, that is the options expiration, 10 of them have been down. And basically, September quarterly OPEX Fridays um, tend to be one of the worst days of the month in terms of just statistically down. We also know that the next week, being the week post OPEX, tends to be negative. And we've already talked about how this week tends to be positive, 30 of the last 50, so it's 30 to 20 here, were bullish overall. So some interesting stats there playing out, but the Friday is the one to watch. Now, posted over on X, a bit of information here about Goldman Sachs baseline expectations for Ford PE in 2024 EPS. And you can see here they're expecting around 4,500. But if we do start to get down, it's always good to know where your Ford PEs are sitting. Basically, between that 4,300, you're looking at the average for the last 20 years of the market. So really, if the market sold off around uh, 400, 500, 600 points, you'd be basically getting the average expectation and a pretty good level for a lot of dollar cost averages out there. Here are some other stats that we've brought up plenty of times, which I'll just quickly flip over. And I also want to bring up, of course, what we saw last week when it comes to the bullish percent index. No wonder the market got to sell off. 42.2% of people believed the market was bullish, which is a huge shift from 33%. And it opens up those sneaky hedge funds, which have tried to short, and they shorted really heavily. I'll post over on X a chart about this. They shorted really heavily last week. Now, I don't think they were shorting necessarily because they thought the market would go down. I think they were shorting because it was cheap to do so. It was one of the cheapest times to actually load up on puts that 
we traditionally just don't tend to get in September and October. Here are some more stats just about this OPEC stuff in terms of where we're going. So pause the video if you're interested in that. But as we know, it's usually the selling that happens at the end of the month that people are worried about in September. Will it happen again? Never use the stats alone. It's always price action first. Stats help you gain confidence in that move and also maybe make reasons of why it could be moving instead of just you know breaking it down another way. So now let's go over to dark pool liquidity. And I think this is where things get interesting. And this one I just had to bring up. It's most likely a Friday print, but you'll notice it's totally away from price. And you'll think, well, wait a second, it's down here at, at, at a price that doesn't exist on the queues anymore. Well, no wonder we rallied. Turns out there was a secret little dark pool uh, trade that went on after the hours and it was kind of transacted on the queue somewhere around probably 30, uh, 372.50. And yeah, well, I'm sure they were pretty happy with Monday's action because we, of course, gapped up and moved up quite highly. But yes, a trade out of nowhere there just coming through very late print on that one. Did we see any trades through Monday? Well, there was a relatively significant trade that came in near the close here on the queues on the Monday action. And basically, this is showing you, it could be a buy, it could be a sell, we don't know yet. But of course, if we do see reactions from this point, which we'll talk about soon, being a 61.8 fib and a few other things, including a gap fell, then we will probably know that they've actually started to sell larger portions. And again, up here is defended around that 384. And we know that there's been a lot of probably buying that's happened at around 362s, 363, et cetera. Let's now scroll over to another one that's interesting, another large trade going through on energy sector right at the highs. So at this point, it looks like there are sellers here, or if there is an accumulator, they're buying at the top, getting ready to push it through. But it looks like sellers, and it does look like even though oil might go a little bit higher here during inflation numbers, that I think somebody's recognizing that it's maybe time for oil to be faded. And a lot of this is coming into speculation, of course, with CPI just around the corner. Do we expect CPI to increase? Absolutely. Inflation is absolutely going to increase. The question is, what's the core doing and how bad is energy realistically, which I'm sure they can already figure out using their AI algorithms and everything else. So I don't think it'll necessarily be as much of a surprise as everybody thinks, but I'm sure it will create a lot of volatility in the markets. Let's jump over to options and take a look at everything that's going on right now. And it was all about Tesla, 1.33 times normal 90-day volume average. Everyone jumping into calls might give up some of that. But yeah, I can see why people are jumping in. Once we broke through some of the key levels, it looks like it's poised for further breakouts. And that is a massive upgrade, let's face it. I don't buy based on upgrades alone. I usually like to buy on price, statistics, and other things. But it absolutely smashed a level that we'll talk about later, which was a key zone that I thought was a very strong level, which faded in the morning, but just could not go down any further. Other big trades that happened, we also saw some large movements into Amazon. It seems like the American consumer kind of trade is coming back here a little bit into, I guess you would say, Black Friday and the big sales that are coming up. But I think this is most interesting. The volume was actually low. So volume was low, 35 versus 39.9. 55% calls. What's that telling us? Low volume, most likely a bit of retail. On Monday, I'd say retail was a huge buyer of the old calls in the last session. And if Wall Street want to steal some money off us, wouldn't it be a good time for them to do so? Let's move over here to consumer discretionary versus everything else. And it's consumer discretionary was the best in the sector of the day. Gold put on some good numbers as well, but failed to kind of you know consolidate and hold above a key zone we'll look at later. But we had staples in there. We had healthcare in there and utilities was middling in the pack. So again, defensives still holding up here on the five day. Look at this consumer discretionary, interesting, with and alongside utilities, staples, energy and healthcare. So on a five day average, we're still seeing a relatively defensive market coming into all of these stats that we now know. And of course, Friday does tend to be that negative day. We'll find out whether it is. That's the quadruple witching event. Things to watch into inflation and into the next 24 hours. First up, US two-year. Of course, we're looking at this closely. We'll be tracking this 5.1%. That's going to be a very important level. Then we've got treasuries over here. Will treasuries keep falling down to new lows? I suspect they will. No trend change yet. And obviously, that weekly is horrendous from a few weeks back. So it's kind of marking out that we might go lower on treasuries. And if we go to the fear of the unknown, that is US 10-year, 20-year, two-year, et cetera, go up, expect markets to act negatively towards that. 
The volatility of the volatility, no movement in the last 24 hours. This one has to be watched though. We'll go into this in another show, which is the Bank of Japan's yield rate here. JP10Y is going to 0.716, but maybe not enough people talking about this. It looks like this could go up to 0.8, even up to the 1% threshold barrier. And I think that this is still a big deal, especially for treasuries to potentially move down there. Now let's move over to the one that I think could be a predictor, and that is the Dow Jones Transportation Average Index. Basically, it's down, as you can see here, multiple days in a row, a little bit of recovery in the last 24 hours. But when you see this, when you see new lows from the Dow Jones Transportation Index Average, it might be worth overlaying S&P 500. And what you'll find is that sometimes it predicts or it's actually early to find weakness. So we're here we have an S&P 500 kind of sidewaysing and the Dow Jones Transportation Index is actually reducing off over that. Good to watch on the weekly. We're seeing weakness there a little bit in this one. And certainly if it's finding this kind of weakness, even through the rally of the S&P, it shows us that maybe all the rally is is AI. And we're not seeing that really nice breadth thrust that we're usually wanting to see with a recovery. And that goes back to Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson's comments. Where things do look a little bit better, though, is, of course, Magma. It's come back here. Microsoft, Apple, Google, Meta, and Amazon, new high. So big breach out here in the last 24 hours, certainly posing that maybe the queues, maybe they want to go a little bit higher. Copper did find its own strength, and this is great for, of course, the Chinese stock market defended zone that was up 2%. We talked about that on our weekend video, and it looks like it's going all right so far. And we've also seen iron ore have a little bit of a pop there as well. The US dollar, yeah, looks like it's actually turning. So let's go to the two-hour chart and have a look at it together. So the US dollar in head of inflation, it did come down to the 20 moving average. So the 20 moving average being the red line here. Oh, we're not there yet actually on this one. It's a different one I'm talking about. So 20 moving average a little bit further away. I think we could definitely short down to that. And this is the area that I wanted to talk about. So I think we could kind of rally here on the US dollar a little bit. We did make a new low underneath these lows which to me gives me a swing turn, or not swing turn, but definitely a scalp day trade towards weakness here in the US dollar. First time in a while, certainly a key level. And although it's only minimal still, of course, for a big swing turn, you'd need a 102, kind of 90 to be closed below. But I think it's a critical zone. And that's been good for gold, but not good enough. Rejection, rejection again. Day close above 1930, worthwhile setting alerts for that. Huge deal, I think, if that does happen on gold. GDX, gain, th same thing. We talked about this. We wanted to close above, I got the alert into the open yesterday, 2881. And it looked pretty good for a little while there, but it wasn't able to hold above. So it actually just sold straight back down. It wasn't able to hold a close above this level. And I think that's kind of annoying because of course it means that we still need to wait. We've got a long leg doji here on gold stocks. And while I think gold stocks are really underperforming gold spot, yeah, our opinion doesn't mean too much until we start to see some really nice action going on there. US oil doesn't show weakness yet, so it could still keep going up. I still think 90 to 92 a barrel is very popular or very possible. And AMD, the Spectre stock strikes again. I said this in our Monday stream. And by the way, Tuesday stream is open to everyone for the public. We've got a few people, special guests, jumping onto our show for our that are coming to our Vegas conference. So if you're interested, definitely check out our Tuesday pre-market open. That's literally in only a few more hours time and we'll be doing it together there. AMD, it's weakened a little bit here. And what's interesting is it wasn't able to get past with the closure above that level that I set alerts here for together, 111, 112. And when we were looking at this zone, we wanted to see it breach above. AMD often does this. If you go back through history, it often sells. So if you look at this November, December selling, of course, we know what happened with the market. March starts early and starts selling. April, mid-April, we started selling the rest of the market. August, mid-August, we started selling the rest of the market. AMD went first. So in some ways, AMD could be precursoring here that the market is not what it seems. And of course, AMD often does do that. What does look a lot more bullish though is Tesla. I've got to say that is a very strong close for it. And while it might drop down, oh, maybe this is the catalyst that you guys were needing. We hoped for 200 to 210. We got a 212 on this stock and then it of course bulled up. Generally speaking, you'll usually get more of a pullback before it goes rallies. I don't know if you will now based on this because it took out the supply. I thought 263 was key. It opened to 263, 264. 
It sold a little bit. So if we go to a two-hour chart, you'll see what I mean. Well, it doesn't look like it sold, but it did sell in the open a little bit, maybe one, one and a half percent. And then it just went rally, 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 rally. New high, uh, very, very critical. Weekly might be the, the show for it overall because, of course, you can see the closures above this would be huge. So maybe for some positional traders, you might want to wait for that information. But yeah, that's, look, it got mean reversion. It's a very strong looking candle here on this and it's it's hard to fight with something like that. The rest of the market will actually need to fail to bring Tesla down at this point because it's a very strong looking technical. When we move over to AAPL, things look a little bit different. Less than 24 hours, I believe now we're getting the new iPhone. And of course, uh, we will know whether the stock's going to react positively to that or not. 20 moving average, holding below. As with the Tesla, we went through the 50-day moving average. In that case, the 20 is holding resistance. Now let's move to indices. We've got C, triple Q, bit of an island reversal here. Relatively strong line right on our blue line. We see some defense of that. I still think that's where buyers sit, as in positional buyers. So yeah, the Chinese stocks are relatively okay at those zones. We'll find out whether they can hold. German 40, certainly looking a lot better. And... I think this is a pretty big thing here when it talks about, you know, long leg doji, long leg doji, long leg doji, closure above. Again, pointing in towards maybe the markets are starting to turn or trying to turn up here, which is again, statistically relevant into uh, this week, which tends to be 30 up, 20 down. ASX 200 is the same. It's kind of rallying off that little defended zone. Russell 2000 looks absolutely terrible in comparison so the smaller stocks, this is big stocks, not small stocks that are going with it. The small stocks look really bad. Russell looks like it wants to make a new low. The Qs look like they're kind of at a resistance. Here's the NASDAQ trading right in that golden pocket at this stage. But I think the S&P will really be the deal breaker here. 4,500, these are the levels that we need to be watching. A lot of you are going to like what you saw yesterday. Nice gap up, held the high, that is strong for sure. And then we move here to 4,500, the last chance here for the bears. If we get through 4,540, which I think we've talked about, 4,540, 4,550, we've talked about that a lot. Once we close above that, you'd think even a new high is coming. And maybe seasonality just will not be playing the game. So, so much at stake here into the inflation numbers for these pairs. US 500, here's how it played out. We mentioned on the weekend video that bulls would be here. They would break even about here. And it was just all smooth sailing. Technically, the profit target zone is 4,500. So we haven't quite filled the gap yet. So you're looking for that to happen. And for bears, this is what you want. Up here, down low, 4,469. Very good for the shorters, okay? That would be excellent for the shorters. At this stage for bulls, you just want to keep rallying through. Get above that 4540, and especially put in nice daily close. It could be further bulls to come, new highs, maybe a new even all-time highs. That's how much is at stake. Bitcoin found its low and it found some buyers. Could this be the stop-loss hunt? Well, at the moment, there's getting a pretty strong reaction to it. We'll break down Bitcoin more in the next video as we see how this thing plays out. But at the moment, I would mark out 26,457 as a high that could be broken, that could be incredibly significant towards further rallies for the coin. Remember to watch Max Payne this week. It's sitting at 440. We're going to update all the key levels, but 440 puts defended, 430 puts defended, call zones 450 and 460. So every 10 points on the SPY is super critical and we'll break down all of those key levels very soon. Inflation numbers, guys, 8.30 a.m. core CPI. CPI expected to come in here at 3.6% up from 32 So it's not like they don't expect it to come through. But that's in still over 24 hours from now, well over. If you haven't already, enter into the competition down below as well. There's not many days left until we draw this thing. This is a few free tickets just to say thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us every day on The Daily Show. If you're around Vegas, if you're interested in coming to Vegas, if you get a free ticket, then chuck it in below. And if you want to join us, remember there are still some early bird tickets for sale. They're limited. They're going to run out this weekend. So it's over at that point. And we're just coming into, of course, only 11 days away. So I look forward to meeting so many of you in Vegas. We've got some ex-Goldman Sachs. We've got CMT guys. We've got people that are literally specialists at specific indicators. I'll be taking notes and we'll be recording the whole session as well. So you'll get a virtual kind of ticket from that action uh, if you do attend the event. Thanks so much, guys. You have a great day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.